Williams, very quick running back. Alonzo Highsmith is a power man, a 230-pounder. Brian Blades is a speedster at split in, and the flanker is Michael Irvin. He's a 6'2", 200-pounder, and he runs about a 4'4". So they've got blazing speed at the corners. The question is whether or not Testaverde will decide to go early with the pass or whether or not he will decide to probe around with a running game. He's got both tools honed and ready, and here's your first snap, and he's going to throw on first down. Dumps it off, and the pass is dropped. Just flat dropped by Willie Smith. Willie Smith is called by his coaches, one of the outstanding tight ends they've ever seen, but he just flat dropped that one. Paul Berticelli is a 255-pound tackle. Dave Alekna is a 240-pound guard. Greg Ricosi at center, 265. Paul O'Connor at guard, 265. And Ed Davis at tackle, 260 pounds. And it's a relatively young football team on both sides of the ball for Miami and, for that matter, for Oklahoma. Both relatively young teams. On second down and 10, they go to the run and bounce Highsmith outside. He gets it up across the 25 to the 27. Oklahoma sends out on their defensive unit these people. And the four rush men, the down men up front, in a sense, are Daryl Reed, Richard Reed, Curtis Williams, and Steve Bryan. Casillas is not there because he's hurt and probably going to be out a month. Kevin Murphy is an All-American. Very, very tight now on third down and three. Tester Verde wants to throw. Gets it deep downfield. He's got a man, but the pass is just a little bit too long to Brian Blades. Blades had pulled away from the defender on it, but the ball was just a little too long. Blades is a world-class sprinter. Outstanding speed. And you can see that number 14, White, just gets fooled on the play completely. And uh, Blades goes right by him. The pass is a little bit overthrown, or it would have been a touchdown. In the punt now, Fiegel's for Miami, averaging about 37 and a half yards per kick. Derek Shepard is the return man for Oklahoma. Shepard averaging just under 10 yards per return. The kick is in the air, and it's a good one. Good hang time forces Shepard into a fair catch around the 30-yard line of Oklahoma. And the Sooners send out Troy Aikman. Aikman's pretty good size, 6'3", 215 at quarterback. Leon Perry at left half. Perry's 220-pound freshman. Patrick Collins is a 185-pound sophomore. And the fullback is Lydell Carr, a 215-pound sophomore. So they're young in the backfield. Wide receiver is Derek Shepard, 185 pounds, 5'11". So here comes the Oklahoma wishbone from the 30. Aikman hands the ball off to Perry. And nothing fancy about it. He just popped it and picked up three. Tight end is Keith Jackson, the big sophomore out of Little Rock, 240. Mark Hudson, a tackle at 280. Eric Pope at guard, 265. Travis Simpson at center, 265. The right guard is Anthony Phillips, 275. Redshirt freshman. Greg Johnson is a 305. Like some of the Arkansas players, they have to take him down to the cotton mill to weigh him. <laughs> Oh, Second geez. down and seven. The ball is handed off inside. The gain is up to the 28 by Lydell Carr, the fullback. Brought down by Jerome Brown. Brown is a 265-pound tackle on the front, along with Dan Stubbs, Derwin Jones, and John McVeigh. The backers are Fleming and George Myra, Jr. Yep, that's George's son, Winston Moss. And the secondary of Ellis Fullington, a surprise daughter today, Selman Brown and Denny Blades, the brother of uh, Bernie. Damon Stell is into the lineup now for Oklahoma. He's number 27. Ball is handed to the up man for the first down, Lydell Carr, the first man out of that wishbone, and Carr with good leg drive pounds it in there before Jerome Brown can bring him down. Interestingly, on the first, on Miami's possession, they had third and short. They went to the pass. Oklahoma, first possession, third and short. They go for the run and make it. Miami did not, obviously. As we look at Barry Switzer, Winning this coach in college football that's been coaching over 10 years. It's first down Sooners just over their own 31. First man is Carr. He gets the ball. And George Myra, the middle linebacker, gets him at about the 20 at the uh, 46. Myra, number 45, plays the middle linebacker position. He patrols that middle like a cop. He's to go right with that fullback. But the center, Simpson, gets a little bit of his leg 
and slows him down. And by the time he gets over and grabs car number 45 down, car's legs are moving and he falls forward for a nice game. A pickup of about six yards on the carry. Second down and four. And they stay inside with car. And he's close to midfield at the 49. Troy Aikman, the Oklahoma quarterback, is not a true wishbone quarterback as we as we would like to imagine or accustomed to so Oklahoma runs the wishbone formation but a lot of other plays Keith they mostly run plays out of that alignment seldom the triple option well here's the reason why they succeed with it Carr on four carries has picked up five yards four five and four just the style of a wishbone offense third down and two for the Sooners Still going with Carr. This time Miami's reaction to him is quicker. And they stop him after maybe a half yard with Derwin Jones and Jerome Brown. The two big guys in the center of the defensive front pinched him. And they still need close to two yards on fourth down. And out comes the punter. Here are the defensive stats of Oklahoma. And just look how impressive they have been. Number one against rushing. Number two against passing. Number one against total defense and number two against scoring just outstanding Mike Winchester in the punt for the Sooners a junior out of Marietta Oklahoma and you see his average it's a good one Kintai Dave Kintai waits underneath the high hanging punt back at the 12 yard line he'll try it and uh, probably could have let it go because it was a tail tracker and might well have made it into the end zone 38 yard punt in his second year at Miami now ready to watch his offense go from the nine yard line if Kentai had fair caught the ball he'd be up at the 12 if he'd left it alone it might have been in the end zone but they go from the nine Estaverde has Williams and Highsmith behind him and they get tangled up in the backfield but Williams with his quick feet makes something out of it anyway it picks up about five yards as he comes out to the 14. Oklahoma so far, Keith, has stayed in their basic defense like we expected, seeing if they can stop Miami with a minimum rush, make him throw the ball hurriedly, giving their defense a chance to protect against those seams that the receivers work into for the reception. He really didn't get five. He got about four and a half. So call it second down and six, just short of the 14. And they send Mike Irvin, the flanker, wide to the bottom of the picture. And Tester Birdie's back to throw and has good protection. Throws underneath to the 20-yard line to Warren Williams, the back swinging out of the backfield. And he's got a first down. Penn State having a ball game with Syracuse under the dome today. And Syracuse uh, getting a touchdown. Penn State countering with a field goal. And Nebraska has had all it could handle against Missouri today, but looks like they'll handle it all right. And Ohio State now pulling away from Purdue. Notre Dame beats Army 24 to 10. First down, just over the 20 for Miami. No score first quarter from Norman, Oklahoma. That's Warren Williams to the 23. Kevin Murphy, a senior from Plano, Texas, whacked it. Kevin Murphy, number 39, didn't, was injured last year, did not get to play him, but the first game this year, he's come back strong from a foot injury. All Big 8 Conference as a sophomore, all Big 8 Conference as a junior. Back for his fifth, fifth year and is outstanding on that play. He was an All-American in 1983 in some of the teams, too. So he's quite a player. Second down and call it seven and test Tiverty back to throw. He had Smith down the middle, and Smith is knocked down by an Oklahoma defender. Test Tiverty finally dumps it. Ball is caught by Williams. And he's got a first down up around the 44-yard line. Keith, one thing that Jimmy Johnson told me, that Testaverde can move around. He's mobile faster than uh, the quarterbacks of the past at Miami. This time, receivers are covered, although Keith, at least he didn't see Smith. Keith called it right. Smith was open, but watch the mobility of Testaverde. Gets away. Now he throws the ball to Williams, number 24, and watch out. These Miami backs can fly with that football once they catch that pass. So it's first down at the 44 for the Hurricanes. And they're off the hook and Testaverde now with some daylight. Goes big with it. Down the sidelines for Urban. He's got the ball. He's on his way. Touchdown Miami. He 
He burned Derek White, the cornerback. 56-yard touchdown pass. Testa Verde to Michael Irvin from Fort Lauderdale. Michael Irvin just stayed wide, Keith, and uh, Testa Verde dropped the ball in. Watch the arch of this football. He knows he's got to lay the ball over the cornerback and drop it in front of inside the safety man. The safety man was nowhere there. It was really his responsibility. Michael Irvin, freshman, 6'2", 195 pounds with blazing speed. And in comes Greg Cox, who has never missed an extra point in his college career. He sits 61 in a row. Make it 62. Keith, let's watch Michael Irvin run that pass route again and how he got open in the seam. 14 white right there is to release him to the safety man. Now, where is the safety man? Where is the safety man? Nowhere to be found. Result in a touchdown. Raymond 35 was late getting there. 8.44 to go, the first quarter. Is there. Patrick Collins, number 33, and Eric Mitchell, number one, are the deep people for Oklahoma. And Mark Selig now will kick off for the Hurricanes, who lead 7 to nothing. It is going to Mitchell at the 5. And he gets belted at the 21, and a penalty flag is thrown. While we're waiting for the penalty, here's Barry Switzer on his quarterback position. The one area of concern is we're so young at quarterback. The inexperienced quarterback hurts us. At least we had Danny Bradley last year, an experienced quarterback. But uh, Troy Aikman is the best passing quarterback we've ever had, and we're going to utilize his talents. And uh, the penalty is called against the Oklahoma Sooners out around the 21-yard line. The officials today are Big 8 officials, and it's a veteran crew. John McClinic is the referee. There's Andy Presgrove, Dale Shoyers, Joe Pipkin, John Schroeder, Virgil Deering, and Bobby Bernard. Holding on the run back. It'll be first down. And so the Sooners now will have to start deep in their own territory at the 11-yard line. And out of the wishbone, a lot of things can happen. They can break the big play. They can grind it out. Or they can drop it. Little fake to the fullback, give it to Collins. And Collins is out around the 15 before he is brought down. A pickup of three yards. Now let's pick up with Jim Lampley. Here, Keith, was the scene moments ago. In last play of the game, Alabama versus Tennessee. Tennessee leading 16-14. Van Tiffin from 61 yards out, just short. Tennessee, Johnny Majors has beaten Ray Perkins three times by a combined margin of five points. They win it today, 16-14. Yours, Keith. Yeah. Mm. Tennessee wins one. How about Tony Robinson? We'll check with Jim on that a little while later. But right now, here comes Leon Perry to the outside. And he picks up a first down for Oklahoma up across the 25 at the 26-yard line. There's the value of the football player, the running back with vision. He banged into the hole. There was nothing there. He bounced it outside and found something. Keith, another thing is Perry weighs 220 pounds. He's just a freshman from Orlando, Florida. Going to play some at fullback probably today along with his halfback role. But you see just how valuable it is to have one, someone big and strong and be able to see where, he's, where, he go, where he's going. From the 26, Sooners first down. One man wide, top of the picture. That will be Derek Shepard. Aikman turns and goes down the line with it. Pitches it late to Collins. Gets a block on the corner. Turns the corner and picks up about six, seven yards. Boy, that was a good block thrown over there. It looked like it was a Perry who threw the block. Now you're right. The lead back on the wishbone has to be able to block the quarterback. Now, the, the Miami defensive backs have been taking on receivers. Now they're taking on a 225-pound blocker, number two, top of your screen, right there. The defensive back waits and catches him, and there's no chance for him to make the play. Collins is averaging over nine yards per carry on the season. He's explosive, had a big run against Texas last week. Aikman back to throw on first down, goes for the bundle, and it is caught by Keith Jackson. And Jackson is out of bounds inside the 20 at the 16-yard line. Keith, did you see a little bit of shove? 
just before the jump, it looked like there was a little pushing going on. And uh, the receiver, Jackson, came up and caught the ball. Big play. It's a throwback pattern, something that the Oklahoma coaches said that Miami may be vulnerable to. Fake one way, throw it back. But right here, Jackson is six foot three. He goes up and catches the ball beautifully. Outstanding basketball play, a 50-yard gain on the, re on the reception. He may be in hunting for Steve Zabel's record before he is done for catching passes at a tight end position. This goes to Collins, hole over the left side. Picks up three as he is brought down. One Number 98, Jerome Brown, came firing in, but there was just enough contact on the block to sort of nudge him out of the way. Otherwise, he'd have had him behind the line of scrimmage. Those are the people hurt for the Oklahoma Sooners. Need the Miami defensive backs are getting a lesson in taking on blocks and kind of having to come up and make tackles at the line of scrimmage. They'll improve on this as the game goes along. Second down and seven from the Miami 14. Pass to the corner. Good. Touchdown. Oklahoma. The last of the Shepherd brothers makes the catch from Aikman. Take the wishbone, the triple option. Now you isolated the defensive back on 101 on the wide receiver. No contest. Ellis could not cover it. Shepherd has too many quick moves. Tim Lasher in for the extra point try. Sonny Brown puts it down. Tim kicks it. Good. So at six minutes and 34 seconds to go in the first quarter. Oklahoma answers as they too produce the big play. Fake of the ball back, fake of the option, draws the strong safety up, isolates the halfback. The quarterback lays it right out there perfectly. To Shepard on the goal line, he steps over, and with 634 left, we'll be back. Where we've had two big, big plays by each team in the first quarter, it is even at seven. And Oklahoma now will kick off Todd Thompson to do it. He's a freshman from Sepulpa. And deep to receive it is J.C. Penny from Youngstown, Ohio. They're not going to run that one back either. So Thompson has kicked the ball beyond the end zone on both occasions. Here's Shepard, number three, 101, right on the goal line. Bain the defense, Ellis, the defensive back, trying to cover it. Watch him set, watch Shepard set up the defensive back. Makes it, he squares that cut off and separates himself from the defensive back. The ball is right there. Use your weapons. Barry switches on this drive. Two big passes. Aikman's known for a better passer than he is runner. Builds your offense around the strength of your quarterback. And he can burn it. He rifled the ball on that last pass. Estiverde and company now from the 21st down. Ball is given away to Highsmith. Alonzo Highsmith will have one yard. That's all. ABC's presentation of NFL Monday Night Football at 9 Eastern time, the Green Bay Packers and the undefeated Chicago Bears in the airport next time. <laughs> Second down and nine. <laughs> it's Alonzo Highsmith to the outside. Big man puts his shoulder down and bangs into the Derek White, the cornerback. Picks up about seven. Here's Jim. Two scores in the top. Already from the 28-yard line, it is third down and two now for Miami. High Smith sweeping. Sonny Brown, strong safety out of Ellis, Texas, makes the play for the Sooners. When your own offense runs the football, you know how to play defense against the run. Sonny Brown was a strong safety, as Keith mentioned. When the play first started, the defensive lineman forced it outside right into him, and he was Johnny on the spot and made the play. And the 75th time, the OU defense has stopped people for no gain or a loss. That's about half of the plays run against the Oklahoma defense this year. And Keith, one other big point, it's the 25th time they forced the team in the tango offense. One, two, three, kick. And the punt is away. Jeff Beagle's kick is caught at the 44 by Sonny Brown. Only a 31-yard punt that time by Beagle's. 
And the Sooners get the ball back and get good field position out of it. First down, just beyond their own 44. That's a struggle at Morgantown between B.C. and some of you will be seeing West Virginia next week against Penn State. Looks like Clemson finally getting the offense organized and Pittsburgh defeating Rutgers 38-10. Looks like the Panthers may be getting things organized. And there's the uh, story of the Alabama-Tennessee game that Jim Lampley gave you a few minutes ago. Reverse deep. Goes to Collins. Two men in front of it. But there's a flag down, Keith. Big play for Oklahoma, but there's a flag waiting back up at the line of scrimmage. Oklahoma feels very strongly that Miami is such a pursuing team chasing the ball carrier immediately that they had planned to throw back and run reverses in this ball game. They broke the backfield, lined up in a flanker, and out they came with it, but to no avail as a penalty. Holding. That's 10 yards. Four minutes and 30 seconds to go first quarter. Barry Switch is saying, who in the did that? Bleep did that. <laughs> <laughs> Don't blame him. He's getting right there. You get out there and tell him. He's on that referee right now. How in the world could we be holding on a reverse play? Oh, he's made. It's still first down. That touchdown in the first quarter by Oklahoma, incidentally, was the first time they've scored in the first quarter this season. They've been playing very close to the vest. leaning. First touchdown, anyway. Yeah. Keith, they've been leaning on their defense since the defense is number one ranked in the nation. They back up now on first down and 20 to their inside the 35 as Aikman drops to throw and shoots it down the middle where Keith Jackson, the tight end, is wide open. And he's got a first down. No, he doesn't either. He's short of the first down by two yards. This is the auxiliary offense that Oklahoma has put in to take advantage of their quarterback, who is 6'3", Aikman, sets up like an old pro team and rifles that ball to Jackson. What a target he is right over the middle. Somewhere the linebackers of Miami got lost. No one around, and the pass goes for a big game. Second down and two from the Miami 47. Aikman still got it and turns up field for the first down. Gets a block out in front of him, and he's hit the chalk. He's out of bounds at the 21. He's out of bounds at the 21. Keith, the one good thing that Oklahoma has done, they have got away from the stereotype offense. After handing off to Lydell Carr, look at the crowd. Three people waiting right there to tackle Carr. Not enough people left to take on Aikman, the quarterback. Good blocking downfield by the wide receiver, number three, Shepard. And Aikman shows some running ability there, more than people had said that he had. 26-yard gain. And first down at the 21. Keith, this right now appears to be it's going to be the best offensive struggle we've seen all year long. How's that look? A little late developing on the play. Perry trying to cut it back inside. Got tangled up a bit. Number 68, Anthony Phillips, the guard, had stepped back as the protector on the little delay. And uh, he winds up getting about three yards. And Syracuse has moved back in front of Penn State now. I guess that's the first time they've had the lead in the game. But they have assumed the lead late in the ball game. Syracuse tough to handle under the dome. They usually beat somebody when they're not expected to. They did it to Nebraska last year. Second down and seven for Oklahoma. The ball is inside the Miami 19. Aikman down the line with it. Pitches back to Perry. Perry's got a crowd. But he's, as Frank said, big and strong, and he makes something out of it as he gets to the Miami 15. Or Shepard again. Here's the total offensive yard so far today. Run 22, 83, what we expected. Look at the balance. That's the shock. That's what's significant so far. Miami, pass, I mean, Oklahoma passing for as much as they're running. Georgia now starting to come back against Vanderbilt. Vandy had the lead at one time, 10 to nothing in that ball game. And Minnesota winning again today. Third down and four and a half. Boy, that won't work. The Miami people were all over Damon Stell as Aikman was off the snap, dropping back as if to throw the ball and slipped it off to Stell and bingo. Well, the wishbone teams are not most effective on a fake pass and run. But on this occasion, defense. I Jerome couldn't see. Brown. Jerome Brown, number 98, the sack man for the Miami Hurricanes, was back there. 
And in comes the field goal try now. 36 yards, Tim Lasher. One out of one between 30 and 40. What? Ball slammed back, rolling way back upfield where Miami covers it. Blocked by Jerome Brown. He did it, and number 58 came pounding downfield. Bruce Fleming to cover it for Miami. Jerome Brown comes right up the middle, Keith. No one touched him. There he is, and he goes a tremendous leap, gets his hands up in front of it, and blocks it solidly, solidly, and there Miami has another chance. First down on the Oklahoma 45. 45, where the Hurricanes have it first down, and Highsmith can't get loose inside. He started to cut it back against the grain, but waiting for him was number 93 for Oklahoma, Curtis Williams, who's playing a nose guard in place of the injured Tony Casillas. And many people think Tony Casillas is the best, uh, one of the best football players in the country, and he is hurt. Now, number 42 just left the lineup. Paul Migliazzi was helped off the field. So he's out of there, and Dante Jones comes in to replace him, and you don't lose a lot with Dante Jones in there. Back goes Testaverde to throw. Has some time, has some open field, gets it away. Pass is good to Urban, who has a touchdown already, and he's still working at it. And finally down around the 26, 25 yard line. Keith, if you're going to throw the football, you've got to have effectively a quarterback that can scramble. Urban goes, Irwin goes down, and when Testaverde scrambles, Irvin starts working to the middle and there's wide open. Now the excitement begins. He's hard to get down. Difficult to get down. Number seven, Glenn could not hold him. But the key was Testaverde's scramble, concentrating downfield and finding the open receiver. The ball is marked just inside the 26 of Oklahoma. First down for the Hurricanes. A 7-7 ball game with 35 seconds to go in the first quarter. Mel Bratton is in for the first time today. Testaverde rolls it out. Drops one off inside to Highsmith. And Highsmith running hard after making the catch is knocked out of bounds around the 13. Again, Jim. All right, Keith. Testaverde now has hit five in a row. And it's first down Miami at the Oklahoma 13. Ball is handed off to Bratton. Mel Bratton, big barrel chested tough runner, is inside the 10 and dropped around the 8-yard line. And the first quarter is over. So after the first 15 minutes, we've got what we thought we would have. A good one. 7-7 seven, seven tie. Miami Hurricanes and the Oklahoma Sooners in a 7-7 seven, seven tie. Going into the second quarter of play, the ball is marked inside the Oklahoma 9. It is second down and 6 for the Hurricanes. They're trying to untie it right here. And the ball to Bratton. He was hit by two Sooners at the line of scrimmage, maybe behind it. But he powered his way inside the five. These numbers that of this first quarter are a true reflection of what we're seeing happening out on the field. Offense is very productive. And Keith, I think looking behind those numbers, both teams' defenses are having a hard time adjusting to the different style of play something they haven't seen all season long. For Miami, it is third down and two. Three tight ends in now. They've got the power offense in there as they set up with that third tight end in a blocking back position. But go the other way with Bratton, and he won't get his first down. He's going to be a step short of it. Sonny Brown came over and knocked him out of bounds. They set up strong side right, but went to the weak side. And the Oklahoma defensive people, as has been pointed out, run to the ball. Keith, it's very short yardage. I would go for it. Miami has big, big running backs. We've seen Highsmith and Mitchell run over some of the best defensive football players in America from Oklahoma. As we look at Jimmy Johnson, he's going to do the unexpected most of the time. He's great at it. As we said earlier, as a player, he, he dared to do the unexpected. That short yardage, I think he wants the seven points. And with Highsmith at 228, Bratton at 215, he's got a chance to make it. But against the number one defense, Nebraska last year tried right here, would have might have won the national championship for it and failed against this defense. They go to keep it the quarterback test of Verde touchdown Jimmy. quarterback bootleg surprised by Jimmy Johnson he plays that he played that way and he coaches that way he likes to be 
unpredictable. Who would thought that Testaverde would keep the ball on fourth down and three inches? Oklahoma didn't because they chased the back all the way to the right of our screen. Look how wide open the quarterback is. Number he three. really did get quiet quickly, didn't they? Greg Cox for the extra point. And he's got 63 in a row at 14-16 to go in the first half. The Miami Hurricanes have come back to reassume the lead 14-7 over the Sooners. Look at the end zone as Tester Verde bootlegged it out and scored. Now it'll be Mark Seeley kicking off for the Canes. And it is Patrick Collins and Don Maloney, the deep people for Oklahoma. We'll see if the Sooners can answer. Keith, the Sooners came right back last time. 80 yards. Selig hits it. Wins going left to right, and that one carries beyond the field of play. Jimmy Johnson talked with him yesterday and asked him just how good he thought this Miami team might be. Well, I feel like we've got a good football team. They're a very young team with only two seniors starting, but uh, I really believe that we're going to have us a heck of a ball game. We've got good balance offensively, and I think it's going to give them problems. Well, he showed up yesterday wearing his funeral suit. He was all decked out, looked like a banker. Oh, and that red tie and the pinstripe blue suit. <laughs> Jimmy likes to dress. Boy, his team looks good, too. In fact, both teams look good, Keith. Don Maloney is in there at the halfback spot with Collins and Carr, the fullback, with Aikman, the quarterback. Aikman keeping it, going down the line with it. Pitches it outside wide to Maloney. And he's taken out of there pretty quickly, and pretty efficiently by number 19, Daryl Fullington, out of New Smyrna Beach, Florida. Fullington had been blocked, Chief, by the lead uh, halfback and got up off of the ground uh, and made the play. Colorado State jumps out to a lead over Air Force, and Illinois beat Michigan State in the Big Ten today. That is uh, the sixth different ball carrier for Oklahoma so far in the ball game today. Now they break the ball, go double wide. Aikman back to throw it. Jackson's underneath, and he has the ball, and he has a first down up at the 34. So Keith Jackson with his third catch of the ball game. Again, Jim. More from the carrier dome. Of Thank you, Jimmy. 38, Keith. <laughs> One too many. I tried to slip through that day without acknowledging it. Well, Keith, on the last play, Aikman faked the ball, got outside without any oh, rush, and Jackson Dr. came across and found the open the area for the key yardage and the first down. Well, now he's become the big play man. He's made three catches, and he totals 81 yards on those three catches. When you fake to the fullback and um, you draw those linebackers up, the tight end can get open. And the Sooners have a first down near the 34 of Miami. Aikman straight back this time, just dumps this one to Maloney. And Maloney running hard with some blocking help spins close to a first down. Oklahoma's strategy in this ball game was to throw the ball outside to their halfbacks if the linebackers drop back and cover the end. By doing so, it's the, they treat it like a run, Keith. Don't, don't have to pitch the ball. They just say it's a run. We toss it out to Maloney, number 23. He twists and turns and falls for a nice game. He's a 185-pound redshirt freshman out of Chickasha. Oklahoma. This Oklahoma offense in the backfield has all freshmen and sophomores. That's all that they have right now with Tillman. Spencer Tillman, their great runner, injured, cannot play. Johnson, another outstanding runner, cannot play. As we look at some of the yardage uh, numbers right here. Aikman, uh, Aikman is five out of five for 105 yards. When Oklahoma, Keith, how, how long has been since Oklahoma passed for more than they've run? Many years. <laughs> Long time, yeah. That ball is given to Lydell Carr, the fullback, and he's got seven yards on that carry. Now they've got Miami off balance with the mixing up, being unpredictable on offense. Running up the middle, running wide, screening, throwing the ball on misdirection. They've done it all. My, uh, Oklahoma has done it all in this ball game. The ball is just over midfield for the Sooners. Maloney's out now, and Damon Stell comes back in. Stell is 27. Car for the first down. Ball comes bouncing loose, and Oklahoma recovers it. I thought they might have called him down, but didn't. That ball was bounding around, and Keith Jackson dove on it and recovered it. Well, Stubbs was supposed to tackle the fullback the middle of your screen 
Number 96 is supposed to tackle the fullback. He's no, there's nowhere there. Look at the hole, the left side of the line. Hudson and uh, Polk just wipe it off. The defensive end was supposed to tackle the fullback, and he didn't get there. Number 36 was the man that came over in the Benny Blades and knocked that ball out. Now look at that thing bouncing around, and suddenly Jackson spotted it and covered it. And it's first down for the Sooners at the Miami 44. Miami's changed their defense. They've got everybody up on the line now. And Aikman pitches wide. It goes to Stafford, Anthony Stafford, in the lineup for the first time. Another freshman from St. Louis, 165-pound speedster. Boy, he's what, what a great play. He's a great play. Oklahoma's an unbalanced line. She's so going to get a little extra block. Second down and seven. He picked up three. Aikman going down the line with it. Big old Brown. Looked like, or was it yeah. Stubbs? Jerome Brown. Jerome Brown, number 98. From the left of your screen, wasn't touched. He comes right through number 98 and just grabs Aikman. Aikman doesn't have a chance. I'm not sure that Jerome knew that Troy had the ball. I wasn't sure either. Well, but, it, uh, <laughs> he took him anyway. When the quarterback goes away from you, the back to it, the fake of the fullback, he sinks that ball in that uh, fullback's uh, pocket and you can't find it. Can Aikman to throw. Has a man. Wide open. Shepard. And Derek Shepard, who scored Oklahoma's touchdown, picks up a first down for them at the Miami 17. Ellison Blades brought him down. The fake of the running play, Miami defensive backs get lost. Watch how wide open. There's no use for Shepard to do all that faking. There's nobody to fake to, Keith. Look at there. There's still no one in the picture. Finally, someone gets there to make the tackle. He was going through those fakes, and there wasn't anybody there. Miami somehow had a breakdown on their coverage. Well, it's two outstanding defenses that are getting ripped apart here in this first half. Aikman turns to the crossing back this time. Pat, uh, it's uh, Don Maloney again, 23. And Maloney doesn't get much out of that one. Miami has been playing against the pass in practice because they work against each other. But here's Aikman, 6 for 6, 131 yards. Now, the interesting thing, Keith Aikman, was being redshirted last year until Bradley, their quarterback, was hurt. He had to come over to the offense and play against Kansas. Oklahoma got beat, and the fans got down on him. He's making up for it right now today. Second down and 10. Stell is back in. Maloney up. Aikman to throw. To the corner. It is knocked away on a fine, fine defensive play by Don Ellis, the left cornerback in front of Derek Shepard. Shepard, quick, doesn't have that breakaway speed. He's the third Shepard to play for Oklahoma. He's going in and back out. Now Ellis, number 29, makes a great play. He realizes he got a, he's got a chance to go in front. He gets that big left paw out in front and deflects the ball, which would have been a touchdown. I mean, that pass had some burn on it, too. Aikman really zips that thing. Well, Ellis made a great outstanding break on the ball, Keith, to gain that much ground coming from the receiver, Shepard. Third down and ten. Aikman to throw again, and Jerome Brown's after him, and he's got it. He's a stud. That Brown, number 98, is 275. He ran him right into John McVeigh and got a piece of it, and Aikman is not up yet. He got pinched between 230-pound John McVeigh and 270-65-pound Jerome Brown. That's no fun. But some, for some reason, Brown, number 98, goes between the center and the left guard, comes clean, breaks right through, penetration. One thing that Jimmy Johnson loves to teach, he puts the, his defensive men on the shoulders where they can penetrate the gaps and cause the bad play, and they do. We'll be right back with 9-18 to play. When Oklahoma comes back with the ball, they'll go with a freshman from Jamil. California. Jameel Holloway. Jameel Holloway, Keith. Outstanding in high school, was a wishbone quarterback in high school. Todd Thompson now has come in to try the field goal from the 46-yard line. It's a little outside of Tim Lasher's range, but Thompson has plenty of leg, and he missed it. He hooked the ball and couldn't draw it back into the uprights. And at 9.01 to go in the first half, Troy Aikman, they're looking at his ankle or knee. It's the, ankle. It's the left ankle. So he got trapped. 
pretty good ruckus, too, when those two get together. And Don Nealon has done a good job in West Virginia. Miami well, takes over the ball at the 29. First down, and Testaverde on a deep drop goes to the sidelines. The pass is caught by Willie Smith, but he doesn't get a whole lot out of it. About two yards. Tony Rabin, number 35, was all over him. Now well, let's check in with Tim Brandt. Keith, you were right about it being his left leg. It is his ankle. They are looking at it now. The orthopedic surgeons have looked at it. They are going to try to get some weight on it and see if, in fact, uh, how bad the serious, or how serious, rather, the injury is. You can see Troy was in a lot of pain. He got it twisted underneath there, and then a tackler came down on top of it. But right now, it is his left ankle. They don't realize how serious it is yet. Second down and eight. Zipped upfield, complete to Smith. Smith's got a first down for Miami at the 41-yard line. He drilled that between two defenders. He threw it before the defenses, defensive linebackers could react. Smith, interesting story about Smith. Last year, he caught 66 passes, a Miami seasonal record. This year, he has 14 receptions. What, why the decline? They're double covering him, Keith. They're watching him, jamming him at the line of scrimmage. Opponents. Out of the eye formation this time. And the ball goes to Mel Bretton. Big back. Crosses midfield and goes to the Oklahoma 49. He picked up at least nine yards before Liddell Glenn could bring him down. This Miami football team is moving the ball effectively against the number one defense in the country. Last year, as we look at Troy Aikman, Keith, I believe they're going to take him to the dressing room and either x-ray it, uh, put ice on it, and try to stop the swelling. He is hurt. That means we will see uh, Holloway uh, on the next offensive series, the freshman. And they say he is fast. An, an old <laughs> Oklahoma expression, quick as a hiccup. On second and short, long pass downfield, Testaverde to Willie Smith, and the Miami Hurricanes are cooking at the Oklahoma 30. How about the surprise, Keith? Second down and one. Go to your good target. The coaches tell me if you just throw it close to this man, if you just throw it close, he will catch it, but he's wide open here, does it? And the drill, the ball right there, Testaverde has been outstanding while throwing the pass today. Two great tight ends in this ball game, Willie Smith and also Jackson. First down Miami at the Oklahoma 30 with seven minutes and 22 seconds to play in the second quarter. Testaverde is eight out of 10, 146 yards. He's hit eight in a row, pitches the ball back to Bratton. And Oklahoma's defense flows with him this time and handles him pretty well. He just inside the 30-yard line, but he laid a heck of a stiff arm on somebody down there. Look what the Miami Tony Rayburn, yeah. have done so far today against this defense, number one ranked in the country. 56 yards, the longest play, the longest drive, 91 yards, the most points, 14, the most passing yards, 146. Tribute to this Miami football team that mixes up the running and fasting most effectively. Second down and nine, ball inside the 30. Testaverde dumps it in a hurry to Bratton. Bratton is gang tackled at the 23. This time Oklahoma put the blitz on. Is it? Miami begins to threaten. They put the blitz and a side adjustment by the quarterback and the receiver. Recognizing the blitz, a little quick pass out for the completion. They do look like they know what they're doing. They know what they're doing in both the run and the pass, Keith. Very, very impressive. Three wides now. Leaving Bratton alone. And on third and three, Testaverde has a lot of protection. He elects to go to the end zone and overthrows the real estate. He throws past the boundary intended for Smith. And it'll bring up fourth down and three. Smith was double teamed. He was jammed at the line of scrimmage. Jammed by the linebacker and he couldn't get out. Here's some scores. Thompson will be kicking with the win. He's two out of two from this distance. Almost blocked, but he gets it away. And he missed it to the left. Rayburn flashed across there and almost blocked that kick. But it missed anyway. And it remains 14-7 Miami. Hurricanes had the ball, held it two minutes and 31 seconds on that possession. That's the longest period of time they have held the ball so far in the game. But they came away empty with it. Oklahoma takes over first down from their own 23. And here's Holloway in the ball game. Jameel Holloway throwing to Shepard. 
And it's a first down for Oklahoma at the 42-yard line. So there's a bit of a surprise as the freshman comes in, making his uh, first appearance in this ball game, and goes dancing around and into a completion. Shepard is going to push deep. He sets up the defensive back, breaks it off, separates from the back, comes back to the ball. The amazing thing is, Keith said, this is Shepard's first, excuse me, this Holloway. is Holloway's first pass of the season, Keith, and it's, it goes for a big completion. Came out of Banning High School in Carson, California. 5'11", 175. Played for Chris Ferragamo. And it's first down for the Sooners. Holloway turns, gives the ball to the fullback. Carr, Carr goes to the 46-yard line. Final car on the carry. Here's the freshman, Jamel Holloway, playing for the first time today. Had a couple of snaps before. 45, Basically going in with a game close, first time. What a... Precious situation he has, but he came out beautifully and gave him a lot of confidence, Keith, completing the first pass. Second down and seven. Pitches the ball well. It goes outside to Stafford. Anthony Stafford goes for a first down. Boy, they got speed on the corners. That's always a, has speed on the corners. That's the acid test for a young quarterback, the blitzing in. Jimmy Johnson knew that. He blitzed to him, and Holloway got the pitch out beautifully. And you've got five minutes and 41 seconds to play in the first half with Miami leading Oklahoma 14 to 7. Arkansas and Texas now 7-3 and uh, it's opening day for the expanded stadium in Fayetteville, Arkansas. And you ought to see this fella sitting next to me uh, fussing. Well, this time the Miami defensive people handle it, don't they? George Myra Jr., number 45, jumps right on car. Stop by number 45. One thing, Jimmy Johnson, who's worked against the wishbones, been on squads that coached the wishbone, knows you have to take the fullback away first. You cannot let the fullback make yardage up the middle and expect to stop any phase of the wishbone. Second down and eight now for Oklahoma. The ball is just short of the Miami 44-yard line. He's checking off. The brassy young fellow is. There goes the fullback. Lydell Carr galloping down to the 36 for a first down. Keith Lydell was hurt, I believe. He really got, well, he was high load. Oh, well, he's jumping up. He's tough. But he got, as Keith said, the second man up. Notice carefully, after he gets hit by the first man right here, the second man really hit him. Can't see who that is. Selwyn Brown is 32, yeah, Brown. and Benny Blades is 36. Boy, you can see the head when he flies back like that. That hurts. Carr with 10 carries, 48 yards, and he stays in. First down Sooners, 36 of Miami. Nope, Carr's out. Anderson is in there at fullback. Give the ball to Patrick Collins. And he is another busy sort of a runner as he moves the ball inside the 30. Well, that I've what one penalty flag so far in this ball game, and, and I don't believe we've had a turnover, have we? Don't believe we. Nope. Beautifully played game, but the defense are doing all they can do. The offensive line of Oklahoma, outstanding, and that takeoff at first ten inches is the pivotal error for that offensive line in the wishbone. They control that first ten inches. The backs are gone. It's second down and a long three. And the fullback, uh, Rodney Anderson, carries a 205-pounder out of Dickinson, Texas, and he does not get the first down. They are a yard and a half short, and they're going to go. Two different styles of offense, both highly successful. Oklahoma lining up and running the ball, using the option plays. Eight using a lot of people, too. Lo using a lot of people. That's eighth rusher that we've had carry the ball for Oklahoma today. Here's the blitz. They take it inside, and Miami stops Patrick Collins. They give him a, all that he could make, Keith, and it's going to be very close, maybe a foot short. I think that uh, a running football team here, Keith, usually will go for it. Cars back in. It's going to be about two feet short. Big play for Oklahoma, and a big play for Miami, because if the oh, wishbone teams have a way, Keith, of scoring on short yardage, if they don't stop him at the line of scrimmage, the quarterback to the pitch could walk in for the touchdown. Here's Barry. You can see the little frown on his face. Three minutes to go in the first half. 14-7 Miami. Two split ends. That's unusual. I 
I think that ball came loose and was rolling around, and Miami has stopped the play. Holloway, I think, missed his handoff to Lydell Carr, and as a result, Miami clobbered him, and they hold Oklahoma and take over the football. Seven for Miami as Testaverde takes a deep drop to set up a screen pass for Bratton. Spins away from the open field man and gets it up across the 30. Boy, he almost got loose for a big play. Here's Tim Brent. All right, Keith, I've just run out of the Oklahoma locker room. I was in there with Dr. David Fisher as he was watching uh, Troy Aikman, the Oklahoma quarterback. The X-ray is back now, and Troy has a fractured fibula in his left, just above his left ankle. So it is a fracture. He is gone, and now it's up to Jamil Holloway, the youngster, as you watched him. That's a four-week, four yeah, that is mm. sad. That's a four-week injury, Keith. Mm. Be hard to get back earlier than four weeks. Second down, call it seven for Miami after that effort by Bratton. And here comes Oliver. And there's nothing there for him to speak of. Miami's strategy right now appears to me to be that they're going to use as much of the clock as they can. Do not give Oklahoma a chance if to intercept the pass. Now it's third and long, and they'll either run a, uh, a pass maybe close to the line of scrimmage. They'll take a little chance here. They got the wind to their back but they ran on first and second down. Third down and about seven. They are getting in time, and he goes underneath. That he, he picked Oliver because I guess he felt Oliver was the most available man, but he was being double teamed himself. I think we can look for Oklahoma try to block this kick. I would think they would put in their, their blocking team and go after it. Both teams with three timeouts remaining. Jeff Beagle's kicks today have been 42 and 31. He's got a little help from the wind on this one. Just 10 men out there, Keith. For Miami? No. No, this is that one. Nixon back for the Sooners. Slips down at the 30. Trying to make a cut. And come back this way. 42 yard punt, three yard return, 115 to play in the first half. The broken left ankle. And Holloway dancing around. If he'd have gone left, he'd have had a lot of daylight. Instead, he went back to the right side. And he's going to pick up maybe four yards on the play. Here's Tim Brent. Keith, I have a little bit more information for you on the injury to Troy Aikman. I told you it is that cracked fibula. I just conferred with Dr. Fletcher again, and he says that an injury of this type usually takes about six weeks to heal. That's the average. If that's the case, then Troy Aikman could be back for the Nebraska game, which I believe is November 23rd. Long march from here to there. Second down, call it a five-yard pickup for Holloway. Rolls back to throw and gets his pass off. He has a man, and it is late getting there, and it is almost intercepted by Benny Blades. If you called it beautiful, the receiver was wide open. The freshman just not having the time and not enough practice is a little late with the ball. Should have already set up and thrown. Look how wide open he is. You see how far Blades, 36, comes across comes close to intercepting the ball, but at least he knocks it down incomplete. Doesn't have control as he goes out of bounds. The intended receiver was Lee Morris, number 84. He's a sophomore out of Dell City, Oklahoma. It is third down and five now for the Sooners, and Holloway throw it again. Gets pressure from the backside, gets away from it, passes away, incomplete. Holloway is still shown a lot of poise in my judgment, Keith, coming into this ball game. Hit his first pass, ran the option play, quarter, quarterback stunt on the end, made him pitch the ball quickly. He handled it just to perfection. No question, but he can do the job. It's just a matter of experience. Process is hard to speed up. Winchester to punt for Oklahoma on fourth down with 31 seconds to go in the half, and Dave Kintai is deep for Miami. Low kick by Winchester. Kintai takes it, splits the defenders, and comes back to the 40-yard line. The Hurricanes have the ball, and we look at the Miami campus. From marine biology to music engineering, computer science to tropical architecture, the performing arts to the arts of healing, the University of Miami stands at one of the major crossroads of cultures and commerce, providing a unique environment where students can work and learn with some of the world's leading scholars and scientists. 
Discovering ways to make ours a better world. The University of Miami. If he may just throw the bomb down the field. He might. Like you say, Jimmy Johnson, whoops, almost had a man jump, but he got back, and he is going to load it up. Now he throws it away, and uh, that could be flagged. But we'll get away with it. Troy Johnson, number 80, big sophomore from Houston, was the man getting there's your flag. They're going to call him for dumping the ball. There was not a Miami man within 40 yards of it. <laughs> And that's not exaggeration either. The receivers had all gone deep. My, uh, Oklahoma had dropped back and covered, but here is what Testaverde had done today. Has done today. Ten out of 15, 154, one TD, no interceptions. They always wind up with a big old quarterback. They had Jim Kelly, of course, and big and strong. Uh, Bernie Kosar, big and strong, and now Testaverde at six five, 210 pounds. Ball comes all the way back to the 24-yard line, and he wants to throw it again. And he runs out of the pocket. Now he throws it up the field of Blades, and uh, Brian can't hang on to it as the ball comes in low to him. And so it'll be third down. Keith, as you were talking about Testaverde, of course. Had, I mean, Miami had big quarterbacks. Uh, Kelly was big. He was from Pennsylvania. Testaverde is from New York. So and Kozar Miami, was from Ohio. And that's right, Kozar <laughs> was from Cleveland, around Cleveland. But what happens is a team that has a history of throwing the ball and having success, the quarterbacks migrate to that school where they are assured of having a chance to use their talents. It's third down and about 25, and they run this one, sending Darrell Oliver out into the open, and Oliver runs the ball up to the 35-yard line. The clock is ticking away, and time will run out now, and the first half is history. With the Hurricanes of Miami leading the Sooners of Oklahoma at halftime by a score of 14 to 7. And Tim Brandt now. You have to be pleased, or a statement really. You have to be pleased with your offensive line. They've kept the pressure off Testaverde. That, of course, I think was a question mark coming in was their youth. Well, I'm, I'm pleased with the way the young guys, you know, we don't have a senior starting on offense, and the young guys have really played well uh, this first half, and we expected to move the football. The thing that concerns me is we have worked so hard all week long trying to stop the wishbone, and now they come out throwing the football, and so it really gave us some problems defensively. With Aikman out of the ballgame, he will not return this afternoon. And Holloway, of course, in his first college game, do you put more pressure on him? Do you try to confuse him? How do you handle that? Well, Holloway's a jitterbug, and, and besides that, he throws the ball extremely well. And so I don't know that we're going to change uh, much of our game plan defensively. Uh, we're still going to uh, say with what we've been doing, because we've been trying to pressure Aikman anyway, so we're going to pressure him. Jimmy, as many times as you all have put the ball on the ground and turned it over earlier in the year, you've got to be pleased they've held on nicely. I think our guys have been uh, really intent. Uh, you know, everybody was concerned that this was such a big ball game, but you know, really, we play so many big ball games. It's about every other week with our schedule, and so you know, it's no big thing for us to come in here to you know Oklahoma Field and and play against these guys. We play a lot of big ball games. Well, Keith said the championship you all play for is the big one. Thank you very much. Okay, good luck in the second you. half. So that's our halftime score. Miami leads 14 to seven. Very the first question right off with Aikman gone now. And Holloway in, does that change your game plan at all, your thinking? Well, it affects the passing game. The kid's too short to do some of the things Troy does in the passing game. That's what we're going to miss is Troy's ability to throw the football. We'll probably have to run more options and, you know, do what the kid can do. Now, a lot of predetermined stuff. Uh, the kid's doing a good job so far. I'm proud of him. Uh, but, uh, you know, we're a little short right now. Barry, I've got to ask you, how do you get more pressure on their quarterback? Well, it's tough. He scrambles so well. We knew that, that uh, we're fighting our guts out to try to get to him, but the guy can move around. We knew that he was going to be a problem in that regard. So, you know, 10 out of 16 isn't bad. They, you know, the first half is even for, except for one play. Good luck the second Thank half. Thank you. Okay, let's go back upstairs to you, Keith. All right, thank you. Oklahoma gets the ball for the kickoff, and it's not unusual for this Oklahoma team to come out to start a half when they're trailing like their britches are on fire. They really come out snorting, and I would not be surprised to see them try in this very first possession, really try, to stick it in the end zone and get even. Keith, the first possession most coaches feel are the most, is the most important of the second half. The kick is in the air. And this will be returned from the goal line by Patrick Collins. And Collins gives them good field position up close to the 25-yard line. Here are the people that have to defend now for Miami. McVeigh's 230 pounds at end. Jones, 270 at tackle. 
Big Jerome Brown, he's a load, 265, and Dan Stubbs, the other end, at 240. The linebackers are Winston Moss, 6'3 and 230, George Myra Jr., 6 feet 225, and Bruce Fleming, 6'2 and 230. And here's the Oklahoma offense coming to the line now with Jameel Holloway in there at quarterback, replacing Troy Aikman out with a broken ankle. Carr, Perry, and Stell open behind him, and this is Stell with the ball and uh, caught well back of the line of scrimmage by Selwyn Brown. David Ellis is the left cornerback, 5'11", 170 for Miami. Darrell Fullington at the other corner, 6'2", 190. Selwyn Brown, who just made that play, 5'11", and 190, and Benny Blade, 6 feet and 205. And the ball is placed back near the 16-yard line. Stell is not having a good day. Damon has got people on him every time he gets his hands on it. He's run twice, and he's lost 12 yards. The second down and close to 20 as Holloway sets up the throw, goes deep down the middle for Shepard. He's got it. And a first down at the Miami 39 penalty. third line. A and penalty. a penalty flag waiting back upfield. Keith, that was as pretty a throw any freshman has ever passed in his life. He hits Shepard right on the numbers. Oklahoma is holding. Oh, that's a tough break. But Holloway showed his confidence. He's, he displayed his ability to hit the deep pass. That will wake the Miami defense up. Even though the play is called back, it gives it a different perspective, a different outlook for the Miami defensive team for this young freshman, Jamie, Jameel Hallen Holiday. <laughs> Why about that? <laughs> Holloway at quarterback, Perry, uh, St uh, Stell, uh, Carr, and Shepard, uh, the wide man in uh, the offensive alignment for Oklahoma. Jackson, Hudson, Pope, Simpson, Phillips, and Johnson. Still the front. second down. John McClinic is the referee, a veteran Big 8 crew. And that rain of booze will not worry John at all. Ball is at the eight-yard line, second down. They've got to go near the 35 to get a first down. And That'll be good up to about the 16 as uh, Holloway carried it. He's 5'11", 175, a freshman from Carson, California. His best attributes is speed, quickness. Keith, he was a wishbone quarterback, an option quarterback in high school. He's had good coaching coming from an outstanding school. Guarantee you he's had good coaching. Well trained. Oh, Chris coaches him well. Chris Farragamo. Ball at the 15, maybe 20. That goes Holloway again. And he's out to the 30. That'll bring up fourth down and about five. Two quarterback draws. Safe get some yardage instead of having to kick the ball from the old 15-yard line. They've got it up with a win to the back and should put Miami fairly deep into their own territory. Yeah, Winchester's a good one. He's averaging over 44 yards this year. Two today have been into the win, 38 and 31. Number 11, David Kintai is back to receive the punt. David Kintai, the deep man for the Hurricanes. Winchester got that one. Kintai all the way back to the 20. Penalty flag is thrown back around where the kicker might have been slapped around a little bit. A 51-yard punt. And I think Bubba McDowell may have been the man that came in and nailed the kicker. Keith, I believe it was running into the kick. The two Miami players hit each other and knocked, one knocked his teammate into it. It's five yards. If it's running into the kicker, you can see the two going in. And finally, one teammate knocks his other one into Winchester. He falls over. And it's a five-yard penalty, but it's this, enough for the it's first just down. enough. Yep, it's just enough. They needed a right at five yards, and a five-yard penalty is going to be given the first down by about a foot. So those two quarterback draws all the way ran with a difference and helped them making the first down. So Winchester had kicked that ball some 56 yards, 51 yards, and had Miami well back around the 20. So he did his job as well, but Oklahoma gets the break. And they get a first down at the 35. I would expect a lot of stunts to confuse Holloway. Hands the ball to his fullback car, and Lydell Carr picks up a good five yards right up the pipe. One thing that the wishbone quarterback needs a lot of work 
is the, the stunts on the corner to come at him one time and uh, one time slow play it, delay it, give him different looks on the corner, hoping he'll make a mistake. Give Carr six yards and make it second down four. Flip it outside. This is Stafford. And Anthony Stafford will have a first down for Oklahoma at the 49 of Miami. A great block by the lead halfback, number 33, Collins. The quarterback has no chance. The lead block by the halfback turned downfield on number 32, Brown. Linebacker, I guess, uh, Blades comes all the way from safety man to make the play. Stafford has carried three times and picked up 22 yards. Damon Stell comes in to replace him. Reverse. Reversing. Going to throw it. This is Derek Shepard. Passes away. Intercepted. The pass is picked off by Benny Blades, who came from his free safety position and cut in front of Keith Jackson and plucked it. Jackson was behind the secondary, open for the touchdown, but he got there a little bit too quick. Had he delayed in the middle just a step or two more, then broken to the outside, Blades would have had no chance to get there, but he does, number 36, makes a great play for the interception and stops the drive. First turnover of the game. And let's see if Willie Smith becomes more available. Or if he looks more to Urban. Or if he decides to <laughs> keep run going the ball. There's a lot more options they've got, Keith. And we'll throw it. And he nails Willie Smith up at the 45 yard line in front of Ricky Dixon. Just a dart. Testaverde threw the ball deep. Darrell Reed, defensive end, 6'2", 210. Richard Reed, defensive tackle, 6'4", 260. Curtis Williams weighs in at 6'3", 250. Steve Bryan, 6'3", 255. Kevin Murphy, 6'2", 230. The defensive front for Oklahoma. Midiazzo, linebacker, 6'1", 220. Brian Bosworth, 6'2", 235. And Bosworth has been quiet today. He had 14 tackles against Texas. Little draw play, this time with Highsmith carrying. And on first down, Highsmith picks up about three. Derek White, secondary, is corner man, 5'9", 185. Sonny Brown is uh, the other corner at uh, 6'2", 190. Actually, he plays a strong safety. Tony Rayburn, 6'3", 195. And Ricky Dixon, 5'10", and 180. Keith Oklahoma has come in with a nickel back, taking out the defensive lineman. On second down and the long six. That's the 30 back. Again, he's scrambling, and he's got some room, and he's got a first down as he tiptoes out of bounds at the Oklahoma 42. First time, Keith, that we've seen the blitz by the linebacker. You just mentioned we hadn't called Bosworth, the all-big eight uh, linebacker. He times the blitz perfectly, knocks, gets knocked down by the lineman, but he gets back up and forces Testaverde out of the pocket. But once again... Testaverde, presence of mind, runs for the first down. He's pretty quick. Yes, he is quick. 4-8 in the 40, which is good for a 6-5 quarterback. Good it is. First down near the Oklahoma 42 now. Hurricanes are leading 14-7, and they've got something cooking to start the second half. Ball is handed off to Warren Williams. And he's to the Oklahoma 35. And he's going to be three yards short of the first down. There's the offensive alignment for Miami with 11 minutes to play in the third quarter. And the crowd very quiet now as Miami, getting its first possession, starts to move the ball up the field. Second down, three yards to go for Miami. They're trying to wave. That shouldn't bother the Hurricanes. They're making a lot of waves. Penalty flag flies as Highsmith dives for sufficient yardage for the first down, but let's see about the flag. Instead of Miami having second down and three, it's going to be second down and eight or second down and 13. For, yep, 13. 
Only the what's third penalty for my, against Miami. Puts Miami right back into the passing situation, but that doesn't bother a team that can run or pass equally well. Oklahoma stays in their four-man front, Keith, trying to put minimum pressure, put pressure with minimum Holding people rushing. On the offense, it is still second down. This is a good blitzing situation. Nebraska won today, but it wasn't easy. Big day for DeVos. Maryland won. Yellow ball, big day. Second down, 13. Ball back at the quarter. Dumps it off, throws the ball behind Highsmith, and a penalty flag is thrown here. Let's see what uh, John McClinic, the referee, threw it. It's against the defensive end, a linebacker blitz, and Jones, I guess. Rayburn was coming, and somebody got in by the coattail and held him. No, it was on the other team, Keith. Uh, no? From Miami, holding. Hold. Yeah, it is, Keith. Looks like might be on the offensive center for Ricosi. Number 74 just reaches out and grabs him around the neck. And uh, it's hard to rush the pass. And Williams, number 93, had no chance. Referee right there called it. Successive uh, penalties for holding now. Backs him up 20 yards. And the ball rests at the 45 of Miami. And they've got to go to the 32 of Oklahoma. Keith, on that play, you can use your hands as long as it's within the frame of the body. He got the arm outside the body. On second down and 23, the pass is nailed to Brian Blades. And Blades is knocked out of bounds a yard short of the first down. On a pass like this, Tessa Verde has to throw the ball before the final cut. This is a great experience. Finally, Blades number nine comes in front of the safe demand in behind the cornerback blades goes inside then breaks back out the ball is already on the way right there now as he turns gets eye contact with the ball and he's right at the down mark excellent excellent third execution down, third and one now for miami little a power set give it a high smith and alonzo has the first down at the 30. Most of Miami's running plays, Keith, are just run for daylight, trying to be as simple, look complicated, but be as simple as possible, letting the linemen fire out and the back run for daylight because they've got good backs. And here's what Tesco Verde has done today. 12 out of 18. No interceptions. The Miami running game and 20, 20 rushes, uh, 64 yards, and Troy Aikman, who started for Oklahoma, with a broken ankle. Esther Verde back. Zips it to the sidelines. It's good to Willie Smith. A pickup of seven on the play. He's not that hungry, is he? He'll take what they give him. One thing that a great quarterback has to do, in particular, Keith, let me say, if a quarterback has 62% completion average, as does Tester Verde, then you know he's patient. You recognize it instead of forcing the ball deep, he looks for the person to lay the ball off for the short gain and hopefully a run after the catch. Second down three. High Smith finds a hole on the corner. And finally loses his balance and hits the out of bounds at the five yard line. It'll be first and goal to go, Miami. Miami jumping out to a 7 0 lead on a 56 yard pass play. Oklahoma drove back 80 yards to tie it. Miami came back to lead 14 7 at halftime. Oklahoma's first possession of the second half. They were thwarted on a pass interception, and now Miami is trying to respond and drive it down. And if they do, they will overcome two holding penalties. Ball is handed off to Highsmith, and he gets down inside the three before Ricky Dixon leads the surge that pushes him back. It'll be second down and goal. 14 to seven, Miami leading. Keith, I think we should point out again that Oklahoma is the one, number one defense in the country against the run, against 
the total defense, and Miami mixing it up, keeping these great Oklahoma defenders off balance. It's hard to get set against a team like Miami that's as talented both running and passing. They're the sooner numbers on defense. Estaverde flips the ball out. Highsmith drops it. He was trying to get him out there on a, a screenplay action. He had two blockers in front of him. And an Oklahoma man sort of got between him and the quarterback. And I, he probably lost partial vision there. But he dropped the ball. Thro uh, Testaverde throws the ball off balance. But the read there. number 40 is right there. Right there. Forced the bad throw. Now Miami is in a, either a fool and play or a passing situation. Well, they were down here on fourth down for their go-ahead touchdown. Testaverde bootlegged it. This time he'll just drop and zip one, and it's incomplete. Oh, Keith, he missed. Highsmith was wide open. Urban. Uh, Urban uh, was the man yeah. that he chose to throw to, but Highsmith was it wide was open. All out in the flat. Urban goes inside, and there's nobody to cover Highsmith in the flat. But the timing was a little quick drop, and the ball is a little bit low. But I guess Urban was open. He had thrown an accurate pass, but he could have just floated it out with tissue paper to Highsmith for the touchdown. Didn't see it. So they will settle for three if they can get it from 20 yards out of Greg Cox. Cox kicked from 40 earlier. It was wide left. So just like an extra point, Steve. Kintai fumbled the snap, but he still knocks it through, and there's a flag. I think somebody came in and, and uh, whacked the kicker. They did, Keith. It's a 15-yard penalty. Half the distance to the goal, a personal penalty, may give Miami a first down on the one-and-a-half-yard line. And so Jimmy Johnson has got to decide whether he wants to take the three points. That may be a per automatic first down. A per most personal fouls are automatic first down. Rayburn was the man that committed the foul. John McClinic explaining it now. Miami's going to have a tough decision. I think. They nope. declined it. They're not going to take the points off the board. Good rule. They will take the three points and make it a 17 to 7. Here's another look at the play. 35. Balls fumbled, and here comes Rayburn. Rayburn comes in, and then he charges into the kicker with his headgear, hits him right in the face. 15 yards. 17 to 7 with 849 to go third quarter. Kickoff. And so Oklahoma starts at the 20 and various switchers, a man who loves to run the ball. I've always had that philosophy that the winning is a great correlation between winning and rushing the football. And all the top rushers in college football for the last couple of decades, the Alabamas, the Michigans, Ohio State's, the Oklahomas, Nebraska's, uh, they're great rushing football teams and they have great winning percentages. And he will not go away from it, even though his team is down by 10 points with 849 to go in the third quarter. Keith, on that last possession, Holloway came out through three passes and looked good. Yep. 21 yard line on that carry, and uh, we've now clarified the call from the, it was a personal foul because he simply hit the kicker. And it would not have been uh, a first down. The, the ruling on that that uh, McClinic made, the play was over. So it was a personal d foul, dead ball foul, yep. meaning that the play is over and you. It right. would dead ball foul, right. they didn't have an option. Yes. Lydell Carr isn't going anywhere. In fact, he's going to lose a yard on that carry in the arms of Derwin Jones. So this Miami defensive front has been asserting itself all day. The game is to Colorado. Jamel Holloway caught behind the line of scrimmage. He's still fighting, but he's going to lose a chunk. Well, he's had it drummed into him. Uh, you know, don't throw the thing up for grabs and let somebody right. pick it off. So he kept it. He kept looking for somebody to help him out and kept giving up real estate. And now he's way back there inside the 10 yard line and Mike Winchester comes to stand in the end zone to punt. He has the wind at his back. It's not a strong wind at all, but it will help a little bit. Keith on that last play, Miami, as Oklahoma only had 10 men, that took Miami rushed the, the freshman quarterback. That's a good decision. Coaches agree, rushing it. Like they're game. going after Winchester too. Oh, they almost got it. And they force a short kick out of it as Kentai comes up and takes it. 
And he's a bit of a daredevil as he disdained the fair catch and took the abuse. And Miami has the ball at the Oklahoma 39. As if he'd slowed down at all, it would have been blocked. But Miami, after a 30-yard punt, has it at the Oklahoma 38, where they put it. And Testaverde hands it off to Bratton. And Mel Bratton picks up about three yards. Now Jim Lampley. All right, Keith, here's the latest from Iowa City, where Iowa got a Houtland field goal from 27 yards on the last play of the first half and trails Michigan 7-6. Key stat in the first half, long 12 of 18, 156 yards, no interceptions against the Wolverine defense that had 14 coming in. Back to you. Second down and seven, Miami at the Oklahoma 35. Estaverde throwing on second down. Goes outside to Blade. And Brian Blades, the sophomore, Holds it in front of Derek White, takes the lick, and he's got a first down for Miami. A 40-yard pass for a six-yard gain, but and it was rifled. Otherwise, I believe Keith Oklahoma would have picked it off. Couldn't play the outside cut any better. Ball is just short of the 26. 17-7, Miami leading. 5.55 to go in the third quarter. Estaverde throws on first down. I'll rephrase that. He was trying to throw on first down. <laughs> well, the Oklahoma secondary covered the two receivers. A play-action pass, something that uh, Miami has not done. Fake to Highsmith, number 30, and Miami, uh, the Oklahoma defensive backs do an excellent job of covering blades and uh, looked like it was Mitchell out of the backfield and the sack resulted. Reed, Reed, and Williams. Second sack of the ball game. His blades, number nine, trying to get open. Fake and go, is going for the touchdown. Number 14, White lets him go by and he gets hit by Dixon and falls. Testaverde on a deep drop now on second down at about 15. And he finally runs out of real estate, and the Miami receivers... Keith, that's a great call. The receivers did not break they back. They quit. You exactly, if Miami receivers had come back towards the scramble direction, maybe they had somebody to throw to. But uh, there was Jones right there. I mean, Reed, excuse me. Well, Blades had come down to the corner. He never made any effort to come back. In fact, none of them came back to the ball. And they just quarter... rested. <laughs> yeah. I'll tell you, your so, quarterback's going to take some abuse when he, he's out in the open field like that with people like Darrell Reed pursuing. Reed's an all big eight as a freshman last year, defensive end. It's now third down and 18, back on the 35. And they're going after him again. This time the protection is better. Blades is in the corner. He's got it. Touchdown. Yeah. He threaded a needle. When I tell you he threaded a needle, they won two feet of open space to throw the ball between two defenders. Keith, that was sensational. Well, you saw Barry Switzer, and if you read his lips, he said it was a perfect pass, and it was. Let me tell you, Oklahoma had two men covering blades. Why they didn't go for the ball, I don't know except the ball was rifled in there. Cox for the extra point. He's never missed. This time the snap and the hold are both good and the kick is true. And at 4.06 to play in the third quarter, it is now 24-7 Miami. Now watch this pass. Watch the protection. The blitz is on. And Highsmith, number 30, on the right of your screen, sees the blitz coming and he releases. And the protection is good right there. And the drill. Now the catch. Watch the catch carefully. Two men right there, but the ball was thrown perfectly to blades over the defensive back's head. He must have misjudged on isolation. Let's see if we can tell. Now, Glenn releases him to the safety man. Where is the safety man? Here he comes. Number 29, Dixon, right there. But he misjudged the depth and came in front of the receiver. Touchdown resulting. Blades there once again. 
And a considerable case of shock now has settled at Owen Field on the home crowd. Oklahoma's opening home game. Testaverde now has thrown for two touchdowns and run for another. And Miami will kick off with Patrick Collins and Eric Mitchell. I believe that's the fifth time that Testaverde has thrown two touchdown passes this year. Remember, he sat back behind Coach Bernie Kozar and watched and learned from him. And when the opportunity came, he was ready. There's the scoring drive. And Oklahoma has lost its passing quarterback, Troy Eggman, to a broken ankle. And the kickoff into the end zone. It will be returned from the goal line by Patrick Collins. Collins stops, now tries to go around. He's got the speed, and he gets around the first man. But the second man nails him up on the 22, Randy Shannon. So Oklahoma will stop. And Georgia Tech is leading Auburn in the third quarter. Georgia was tied today by Vanderbilt, 13-13. Here comes Holloway, Jamil Holloway, the freshman quarterback, two yards as he decided Joe to keep Holloway it. On the Miami had drifted a man defensively in between him and his pitch man, and Jerome Brown and Jerome Bruce Fleming Brown combined the for the play. The Colorado is another Ball team the running the wishbone this year and doing very well with it. And Oregon State leading Washington at halftime. If that were to hold that way, that'd be the biggest upset in years. USC over Stanford. Oh, bad pitch. Fumble, recovery, Miami on the football is John McVay. As Holloway was hit just as he pitched the ball out. And Miami's got a break. Once again, Miami using some stunts on the corner at the bottom of your screen, trying to confuse the young freshman. Now, the, I guess that was Brown again. Yeah, Jerome, Jerome Brown <laughs> right through there, hit him in the back and forced the bad pitch. Jerome Brown has been a load all day for Oklahoma. 6'4", 265, a junior from Brooksville, Florida. Oklahoma's defense has been sensational against the run. Have not faced a team, Keith, as we said earlier, that can run and throw like Miami. Bratton from the 22 to the 19. And even though Miami has not made a lot of yards, Keith, rushing the football, they have forced Oklahoma to stay honest, to stay up there to stop the run, and that's what's letting the passing continue to be successful. Now you've got Blades and Urban Wyatt. Second down and seven, Testaverde, Irving, the ball is tipped. At the line of scrimmage, or just behind the line of scrimmage, linebacker Brian Bosworth reached up and nipped the ball. He lost its velocity, and it's a good thing for Oklahoma because Urban was open. Once again, notice carefully that number 44, Bosworth is going to get his hands up right there, that right palm knocks the ball down as key you can see Irvin coming in would have been a touchdown or at least a nice game so it's third and seven from the 19 of Oklahoma Blitz on they pick it up Testaverde shoots it intended for Smith and the ball is knocked away by Brian Bosworth most of the time we think of great linebackers predominantly good against the run Bosworth has made two sensational plays against the pass. This one, he dives. He leaves his feet. Watch right here. He just goes right out and dives and knocks the ball out of the hands of the receiver at the last instant. Tremendous play. We didn't call his name much in fact, not at all in the first half, but he's been very obvious in the third quarter. 36-yard field goal try by Greg Cox. And he got it. And it's 27 to 7 now, with two minutes and 34 seconds to play in the third quarter. Miami has control. Miami defense has just seemed to, getting, to be getting better and better against the wishbone, in particular, given the young freshman quarterback playing for the injured Aikman some real problems. That's Collins drifting under it, a yard deep in the end zone. Patrick looking for a crack, and he almost found one. He got himself out across the 25 for the 10 year. But he was the manager in Atlanta when I was growing up. Holloway. 
a little indecisive now as Miami is putting the pressure on him and he'll pick up a couple of yards. Here's Jim. All right, here's what's happening. It's rough times these days for highly ranked teams. This is Patrick Collins trying to get around the corner. And number 32, Selwyn Brown, was almost taken out of the play, but retained enough of his position to get a piece of him and kept him from really making the turn up field. He did get to the 35, which leaves him a yard short of the first down. Great effort by Collins to sidestep the halfback and turn up the field to make something out of nothing, really, Keith. Miami defense had uh, moved out the line beautifully. Looks like the Oklahoma backs might be swinging a little deep now than they were early in the game. Could be uh, forced by the defense. Carr, Ladell Carr, going for the first down. He didn't get a whole lot, but I think he got just enough. The Miami defensive backs are getting more penetration, Keith, and that forces the uh, Oklahoma halfbacks to run the horn, as we say, give ground. Stell comes in, replacing Collins. There is used eight running backs today. Holloway rides it off to Lydell Carr, the fullback. And Lydell Carr lays a lick on Benny Blades, and they're both slow to get up. Blades stuck his head right between Carr's legs and looked like he might have taken a knee to the head. And he's down flat, and Carr up very gingerly himself. That was a collision. Right up the middle. They'll, when the fullback pops on the wishbone, the only man that can make the play is the free safety. Now, B Blades is a 200-pounder, tough youngster. And he does duck his head, Keith, you're right. When he ducks his head, he puts it right into that knee, turning legs of, of car. It's dangerous. 101 to go in the third quarter. Yeah, Keith, we try, we try to teach our tackling to tackle with our head up and let the head slide by and make the contact with your shoulder pad. All you young football players listed, make the tackle with your shoulder pad. Don't stick your head down and hit it into the legs. We try to teach against that. Freddie's going to be all right, apparently, but he was stunned after that collision with Carr. And Oklahoma right now sitting with a first down. The ball is up on the 48-yard line, and Blades will have to come out for a time. Looking at the top 10, I uh, tonight. They take it back inside. They're working car hard. And the big 215-pounder will get about four yards on that carry to make it second down and six. Most teams that run the wishbone alternate their fullbacks, Keith. It's such a punishing position to fire into that middle on virtually every play and take the pounding from the guard, tackles, and linebackers. Oklahoma's picked up 314 yards on 16 first downs, but they've scored only seven points. And there's very little gain on that play as Holloway is brought down by Darren McMurray. And we're winding into the final seconds of the third quarter, and I think they're going to let the clock run out. 27 to 7, Miami leads by 20. And Oklahoma is content to let the third quarter run out. So we'll be back after this commercial message and a word from our local station. Miami 47-yard line. Jamil Holloway keeping the ball and gets the first down at the 36 of Miami. Troy Aikman gone with a broken ankle and the freshman quarterback having to step in and carry the load. True triple option. Sink the ball in the fullback's pocket right there. Run and see what the defensive end's going to do. He takes the outside, takes the pitch, so you keep it as quarterback and turn up and make the yards. On first down, Holloway gives the ball to Lydell Carr. Lydell and Carr, Carr picks up about five. But I don't know if there's enough time left to keep on pounding away at three, four, five yards a clip. Here are the stats. Oklahoma leads in first downs in rushing, Miami in passing, and total yardage, the key being the injury to the quarterback of Oklahoma, Aikman, and two turnovers resulting by the freshman. Holloway keeping the ball again, turns it upfield, and he's close to another first down. But right now, it is uh, Carr and Holloway doing virtually all of the work. See, the Oklahoma offense has had one fumble, one interception, one missed field goal, one blocked field goal, and failed on a fourth down. 
all in the first three quarters. Had some opportunities that they couldn't cash in on. The big old 98 walking right there. He's, <laughs> he's been Jerome, Jerome Brown has been all over the football field today. Jerome Brown is a junior. 200, number 98. Over the offensive guard, Farrell. Pushes him to the ground and just pursues out the line. Won't give up. Chase that football. Take the proper angle where you can make the play. Number 88, Jerome Brown, has had a sensational game, Keith. Blocking that field goal may have been the turning point. Could be. 26-yard line of uh, Miami now. First down, Oklahoma. And Holloway gets loose in the middle. And we'll get about four. Close to five. Jamel Holloway. Make it four. Well, Brown had penetration again. Looked like, uh, not, no, I, yeah, he missed the, he missed the tackle in the backfield. Brown penetrates number 98. Jimmy Johnson has always wanted penetration against the wishbone. So we, we see a little penetration right here by Brown, number 98, diving, but Holloway is too quick and gets away from him. Holloway now with 40 yards on the ground, gives to Carr the fullback. And on second down and six, Carr is just at the 20. So they need about Stop three and a half yards, Brown. close to four, and again, Brown has the tackle. Keith, even though you know your second string quarterback has to be ready in case of an injury, most coaches, and I'm sure Barry does the same thing, you set up your practice and your starter gets about two-thirds of the work. A young quarterback, about one-third. So Holloway is playing with about a third of the work that um, less than half the work of eight. Keeps it, gets the first down. And he's just inside the 13 of Miami. He turned on a dime, 90 degrees. The distinguishing quality of a wishbone quarterback is cut it 90 degrees without slowing up. Fake to the fullback, right in the line. Go out, nothing there, turn it up. Right there, turns it up with speed. He turns it up with a little quickness there and miss, takes a missed tackle. Now they finally give it to another back. Damon Stell, and Stell from the 13 to about the 8. And time remaining in the game, 12.35. I'll go back to what I said a while ago. This kind of an attack eats a lot of time off the clock. You want to be ahead with this, with this yep. style of play, and Barry Switzer's teams have won 118 times and lost only 23 running this style. But I don't remember the last time they were trading by 20 points in the fourth quarter. Maybe never. Holloway gets in the line and gets to about the six before he is rolled down. The so they'll be looking at third down and the better part of four yards. Well, Myra had Holloway for a loss, but there's a little bit of a mismatch. Holloway at 1-7 in. Quick as a hiccup, Hell Waterbug, whichever you've already defined him, Keith. Myra, the linebacker, 225, just missed him in the backfield. Ball's on the six. They need more than three. It's close to four. Give the ball to Stell again. And Stell diving for the three is close, but I don't know. Keith, it's going to be right on the marker. Close to the first down, if not the first down. Well, it's going don't to be. I think they got the spot. Maybe about an inch short, but it's very close. The ball is marked just inside the three-yard line, and the mark down marker is just inside the three. You're wrong. It's four inches. <laughs> you were right. It was short. The spot, uh, the advance forward progress was uh, very close there. Nine different runners of total 204 yards for Oklahoma. They're looking now at fourth and about four inches. The ball is just short of the Miami three-yard line with 11 and a half minutes to play in the ball game and Miami leading 27 to 7. Quarterback Holloway keeps it and he will have the first down. Best play to run when you've got a quarterback with quickness. You don't have to fake, fake the ball in the backfield. You're right behind the center. And you've got good offensive linemen. Fire out and jump through them and make the first down. Well, that's balance for Miami, isn't it? Beautiful balance. Oklahoma, about what we expected. But I would say, Keith, Aikman, before his injury, was looking brilliant as a wishbone quarterback, favoring the pass more than the run. 
On first and goal, the 20th first down for Oklahoma. The surge is right to the goal line, but it is just short. And it was Damon Stell carrying the ball. The offensive line of Oklahoma has done yeoman work. That's Hudson, Pope, Simpson, Phillips, and Greg Johnson. Well, we have an injured player. Number 58 is linebacker. Bruce Fleming, the Fleming. senior from Monaca, Pennsylvania, heard on the previous play. Timeout for him. Half a play. The Holloway at quarterback, and that was intercepted. Now it is second down and goal. Ball just short of the goal line. Holloway keeps it. And I don't believe he made it. Well, Keith, the Messi, they unpile, and he's across the goal line. But the officials had marked it just where he started, about six inches from the goal line. Oklahoma. Well, Miami's got too much heft. I mean, you yeah. got down there in the middle, you got Derwin Jones, 270, and Jerome Brown, 265. I mean, those are two big, strong people. One of Oklahoma's favorite scoring plays is the double isolation turn handed to the halfback and the other pullback and the other halfback and the fullback leading uh, blockers and halfback jump over the line. That's what Tillman used to do. Of course, at the same time, when you consider that Oklahoma's offensive front runs from tackle to tackle, 280, 265, 265, 275, and 305, you say, well, shoot, they ought to walk through a wall. Well, the defense get lower than the offense, and they build a, another line of scrimmage about a yard in the backfield, and the defense lining up in the creases in the gaps have that advantage on the goal line. They can get some penetration in the gaps, regardless of how big the offensive line might be. We've got a little trouble now, apparently, with the clock. Showing 1073. That's a new one. So while we try to straighten that out, let's check on more scores with Jim. A half a yard away from the goal line. He gives the ball to Lydell Carr. And Carr, touchdown. Here it is. The car just goes over the top. And Keith had already asked why. And he, the ball breaks the plane. All it has to do is break. Imagine their plane of upward from the goal line and official signal touchdown. Flasher's extra point is good. You've got 10 minutes and 28 seconds to play in the game. 27 to 13, 14, but Oklahoma required seven minutes plus for that touchdown. For the Oklahoma kickoff, Todd Thompson will kick it for Oklahoma. Harriman and Kintai are deep for Miami. And Thompson kicks it away. Well, that'll probably hinder somewhat. He just let that thing die down in the end zone. Because when you got all those backs and receivers and everybody like that up there, you can't expect a whole lot of blocking to get you back up field. All right, Tim Brent. Keith, we're on the Miami sideline where they have just finished working with Bruce Fleming. It is a sprained left knee. He is extremely dejected right now and upset because he, of the injury itself. He's being consoled here by the... Uh, the priests on the sidelines of Miami, but it is a sprained knee. They will not know the extent or the damage of that knee until it is examined further after the game, but right now they say it's a sprained knee. He will not be back the rest of the afternoon. All right, 10-28 to play in the game, 27-14. Miami leads Oklahoma. Testa Verde on the snap from the 20, gives to Alonzo Highsmith, and Highsmith is dragged down for a two-yard loss. Kevin Murphy, I believe. Yep. Goodness, Keith, what a play. He took home the blocker and just the block didn't phase him. He goes right out and makes the play for a loss, something that my, uh, Oklahoma needed right now. Some enthusiasm, some momentum to try to stop this Miami offense. Might force Testaverde into throwing the ball, and I would think that's probably the last thing he wants to do at this point. But he's going to throw it, Keith. They've got confidence. Don't worry about that. They don't, may not want to, but they will. Here's the blitz. That's Oliver, Darrell Oliver gets to the 19, and it's third and 11. Now 
Jimmy Johnson, the coach, head coaches dictate the run pass ratio of the football team. The coach up in the press box calls the plays, Keith. Arkansas has scored but missed a two-point conversion and trail now by two as David Kentai is in at flanker for Miami on third down 11. And Testaverde to throw it and zips it and he hits Kentai on the money and his second effort. The initial contact was short of the first down but Kentai slipped away from Sonny Brown and gets the first down. Kentai is going to go out in the flat. Brown plays it beautifully, reacts on the throw, but Kentai escapes he just catches the ball in much time to gain his balance and then twists for the first down and the ball is out at the 32 and there's the time remaining and that got Miami off the hook they lead 27 to 14 and the ball to Highsmith and he's buried right at the line of scrimmage Curtis Williams, the nose tackle, the first man to get him. One thing, Keith, about this style of play, uh, here's what the Hurricanes have done against the number one defense. You can see the, the longest plays and drives and so forth against the number one defense. Most yards passing. But this style of play, Keith, doesn't give the, the opposing defense a time to get the emotion. Second and ten. Bosworth showed blitz, but the long count stopped him. But the Oklahoma defense rises up to get Mel Bratton right at the line of scrimmage, and Melvin goes down. So it's 7:50 now. It is third and ten. When you stop the opposing team like Oklahoma has done twice on first and second down, and then the quarterback with a rifle arm, excellent receivers, good protection, throws to the first down. Keith, it's demoralized. It's hard to get that momentum going for you against this style of offense. They're anticipating pass, obviously, on third and ten. Nichols defense. Four-man rush. Linebackers drop. Testaverde's pass away. Smith has it. And Smith is knocked down by Brian Bosworth, short of the first down. Bosworth went high. Smith almost got loose underneath. Heidi and Smith caught 66 passes. Last year he had 12 against Maryland, 11 against Florida. Kind of like a running back. After he catches the ball, he's just about as effective making yardage as running back, but not with the All-American Bosworth thing. He's caught six today. Smith Eagles is in the punt now. And Derek Shepard is deep for Oklahoma, standing back just inside his 20. Good punt. 18-yard line, Shepard. Just not enough help back there. He does return it to the 26, a 41-yard punt, 7-yard return, 6.39 to play in the feet. Reverse. This is Patrick Collins, and Collins finally runs out of room up around the 31-yard line. Miami staying at home a little bit better on the reverse plays, Keith. They were burned earlier. But uh, we're lucky enough to have the play called back because of the penalty. Keith Jackson, the tight end, has been quiet. When with Aiken was a quarterback, Keith Jackson was having a tremendous game. It caught six passes. Caught three passes. Three, for passes, three passes for 81. Third down and six. Here's Holloway, a little deeper drop this time. Gets it off to Shepard and throws it too high. He had to drop it in between yep. two defenders, and he just couldn't do it. Good call, Keith. The strong safety had dropped back. A one-man pattern. Either open or not open. Shepard goes down, fakes deep, and he's open as far as the defensive back is concerned. But the safety man in front made him force it high. Forced the ball high. And it brings on fourth down, and Winchester, the punter. And it looks like... Another undefeated team is going to fall. Six teams in the top 20 were beaten last weekend. And there's about the same number having trouble this week. Kentai calls fair catch and then lets the ball roll. And it takes an Oklahoma bounce and it's going to roll for a while. It wasn't a very good punt by Winchester, but it had the kind of action on it where it took the roll toward the Miami goal and it stopped down about the 10. Six of luck. 
Testaverde keeps it on a bootleg. And sits down. <laughs> 21. <laughs> and he didn't go out of bounds, Keith. No. Nope. He, he slid into the boundary, but stopped so that the clock would continue to roll. Nine yards. Oklahoma defense is so eager, that's when you're vulnerable to the bootleg. Everybody going with the fake of the backs. Testaverde, watch him slide. <laughs> and not go out of bounds, keep the clock going. Second and one. Williams has the first down as he gets to the 26. 4.34 to play. Here's Jim. All right, the number one. First down Miami at the 26. Both teams, three timeouts. The time is so precious now for the Oklahomans. And Mel Bratton is tripped up by number 93, Curtis Williams, who fought his way from the nose guard position to bring him down. Miami will have uh, Louisville at home next. Then uh, they get a, another test on the road where they have to go to Tallahassee and play Florida State on the 2nd of November. The state of Florida has got some good football teams, Keith. Florida State, outstanding team so far. Lost one game, I guess, and uh, Miami lost one, and Florida none with a tie. Oklahoma has Iowa State next in conference play. Of course, they very much, even if they lose today, remain a part of the Big Eight chase. And the pass is dumped by Testaverde. He sort of threw a knuckleball out there. He did not, I don't think, have control of the ball, so he tried to push it out to Melvin Bratton, and it didn't work. I think Testaverde was throwing the ball out of bounds where it could not be intercepted because Oklahoma had covered all three of the receivers on that side of the field. There's the score. The key to this game so far has been the fact that the four-man rush Oklahoma was depending on has not pressured Testaverde enough. And plus the fact that Oklahoma quarterback, who was looking sensational, broke his ankle in the second quarter. Third down to about 11 for Miami. Down he goes. Fourth sack of the ball game. Kevin Murphy made two big defensive plays here in the last couple of minutes. Kevin Murphy made 144 tackles in 1983, most by down lineman Everett, Oklahoma. And you can see how active he is, how quick, how tough. Barry Switzer told me he plays with a, in a bad attitude, mad attitude all the time. Oklahoma is taking the time out, Keith. And it stops the clock at 3.15 to play in the game. Quickest turnaround that we've seen in college football in many, many years. Derek Shepard is deep now as Fiegels comes in to punt. End over end. Shepard fields it, has two blocks, and returns it inside the 40. 35-yard punt and a 14-yard return. And Derek Shepard that time just made up his mind, I'm going that way. Boom, and away he went. That's the way to return the punt, Keith, when you're in this late stage of the ball game. Turn it up, finds your crack, and just hope you can split the defenders and make the long run. Man down for Miami. They've already lost Fleming to a twisted knee. And you've got 3.06 to play in the football game. It's first down Oklahoma at the Miami 38. Well, if they were to hit one quick here, they would still be in the hunt. Good Miami player got up, trotted off the field. Seems all right. First down as Holloway drops straight back. As all day goes down the middle with it. The ball is popping around and Jackson can't pull it in. Threw it pretty hard for such a short pass. He had two people deep. But they were taken away from him by the Miami secondary. The theory of that particular pattern was to hit Jackson underneath Jackson having 4 6 speed and hope that he could outrun going against the grain and make a big gain out of it. it just didn't work. As I said a while ago, time now is so precious for Oklahoma. Trailing by 13 points. Second and 10. All the way up the middle. What a play, Keith. He gets to the 31 uh, yard line, which leaves him uh, three yards short of the first down. Oklahoma is going without the huddle. They need two scores, two touchdowns, and two extra points. 
The pass is thrown and dropped by Damon Stell. The pass was thrown low and thrown again very hard by Holloway on a short pattern. It was enough yardage for the first down, but Stell couldn't pull it in. Now it's fourth down. Four. Doesn't it sound funny, Keith, calling Keith Jackson? Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, he's a great player. Just a sophomore. Just a sophomore. Highly recruited by everybody. Yeah, but he had good sense. He stayed in the general area, stayed in the home area to play his football. I thought the right decision for him. Holloway drops the football. Tried to pick it up, and an Oklahoma man fell on it. But it was fourth down as the ball was tipped away from Holloway, and number 68, Anthony Phillips, fell on it before Holloway could pick it up. Holloway was going to try to break the rush between Brown and Jones, 98 and 66. And as he comes right up the middle, the ball is just stripped out of him. Just a little bit of inexperience there. The freshman quarterbacks substituting for the starter, Troy Aikman. Fumble the ball. And with that play, and that turnover, it may well have resulted in slamming the door on the Sooners' hopes. Miami comes out. First down at their own 34. They will run it now, Chief. Warren Williams picks up three. Here's Tim. Handoff goes to number Dr. 24. Dr. David Fisher, the Williams. orthopedic surgeon for Oklahoma. And the first question I have about Troy Aikman, the quarterback, uh, you mentioned to me six weeks. If he does come back right around that Nebraska time, will it be too stiff to play, or will he be back at all this season? Well, it's, it will depend on how his uh, rehabilitation goes and how his healing is, but I would imagine he'll be awfully stiff because he'll require a cast for at least six weeks and the stiffness in the ankle just how soon he will limber up that's just a matter of, of how fast we can rehabilitate him and how his body responds to it i was in there when you looked at the x-rays and you said six weeks is the average is this a bad break though or is it just a green crack this is a horrible break for us but it, as far <laughs> as the fracture goes uh, it's a non-displaced fracture and it should heal without problem okay thank you very much you bet keith Thank you, Timmy. And it's second down right now for Miami at about seven, as Oklahoma now must start spending its timeouts. They have one oh, remaining. College football scoreboard, a rundown of today's action for you coming right after the telecast is done here in Norman, Oklahoma. And now this big crowd of more than the middle 70s is up and leading the 64th consecutive sellout. Miami just trying to kill the clock now. Oklahoma makes contact. They're offside. Trying to anticipate. Sometimes an offensive lineman will move under that kind of pressure, but that looked like an encroachment call against Oklahoma. Darrell Reed, number 40, got started a little too soon. Fierce, it really was, with both offenses just out executing the defensive uh, counterparts. 2.23 to go in the game. It's second down and two for Miami. And they stay with the ground game, but it's a hard road to hold when you're trying to run against Oklahoma. No gain at all right there on that carry by Warren Williams, who is a six-footer, 205-pound sophomore out of Fort Myers. It's backfield for Miami. Testa is a junior. They are have so many sophomores and freshmen playing in the starting lineup. If they're on your schedule for the future, look out. This is Williams, and he'll have the first down. And that will probably do it. Keith, the Miami people were talking last night if they could win the day. There's so many similarities to the 83 national championship Miami team, which lost the opener to Florida and then went on and beat Nebraska in the Orange Bowl. They've got a lot of things going for them in a tremendous quarterback, good running game, their defense doing quite well today. So there's, there's a chance for it to work the same way. Well, their, their future schedule is Louisville, as we told you, then Florida State. They got Florida State and Maryland back to back, both on the road. And then they finish with Colorado State, and the final game, November 30, is Notre Dame. They do not have an easy road, but uh, with this quarterback, Testa Verde, I think they're capable of beating anybody in America, particularly with the running attack that they have to at least make the defensive team opponents stay honest. 147 remaining now as a five-yard penalty is marked off against Miami for motion. So it'll be first down and 15 for the Hurricanes. 
Dan Jerkovich, my old friend, on the for so many years, and now the athletic director at Miami. I don't want to see him. He's got to be walking on air. He'll be nine feet high. Sam's done a good job of raising money, hired Jimmy Johnson, chose Jimmy late in the season. Done a, Jimmy's done a great job of, on a tough circumstances last year, Keith, coming in in June and trying to coach when Schellenberger left. And now this year, the first full year, spring and fall, he reshaped his defense according to his style, kept the same offense that Schellenberger used. World Series, 8 o'clock tonight. The impact Kansas City some. They don't have it this year. The pitchers have got a hit. Second down and 13. And uh, this is Williams getting some work in the late going here. We didn't see a whole lot of Warren during the course of the ball game. He was in early, then gone most of the second and third quarters. And we're now rolling along inside 40 seconds to play in the football game with the Miami Hurricanes coming to Norman, Oklahoma and against the top defense in the nation. Run up a 27 to 7 lead. It is now 27 to 14, and the outcome is academic. The Hurricanes will go home with a victory, and the Oklahoma Sooners will face their first loss. This will be the last snap, Keith. Great effort by Miami. Oklahoma has nothing to be ashamed of. Tremendous effort on their part. Miami set the tone for the ball game in the first quarter as Testaverde hooked up with Irvin for a 56 yard pass play. And from that point on, until the game was pretty much in hand, it was the forward pass that Miami used to pierce the armor of Oklahoma. And they win it by a final score of 27 to 14 on the road.